Okay. As this show is focusing on celebrating inspiring Jewish women, I thought it would be really special to bring along a woman who has chosen to join our community. And I'd like to welcome Jess Hi. to the show. And we would love to hear your story. It's amazing to be a Jewish woman. And I think it's amazingly inspiring when I meet a woman who's chosen to become part of our secret club. <laughs> um, so please, please tell us your story. Okay. So I'll start from the very, very beginning. Um, my mum's French, my dad's American, and so we moved, we were living in New York, we moved to the UK when I was about three, um, and my dad's work placed us in Hampstead Garden Suburb, so immediately we were within a Jewish community, and not having any family in the area, the Jewish community being welcoming as it is, um, kind of opened its arms to us and immediately we were going to Friday night dinners, we were celebrating Rosh Hashanah, Pesach. Even like though they knew you weren't Jewish. Even though they knew you weren't Jewish um, and my mum formed amazing friendships with the women in the community. Um, so right from the get-go living in the UK our experience was basically living a Jewish life without being Jewish and um, I went to a school with predominantly Jewish kids um, and it, it was always kind of the ongoing joke that me and my siblings, we were honorary, um, <laughs> but not official. So um, I've kind of grown up within the community all my life. Most of my friends are Jewish. Um, my best friend introduced me to her friend, who is now my husband, um, and that kind of was the catalyst to the whole journey. At the time that you were dating Ed, you were working for the Vogue magazine. Yes. So what was so, your job? I worked at Vogue magazine. I was working there. I left about two years ago. I was working there for almost ten years. I was beauty editor, so writing about makeup trends, um, latest skincare, also health, fitness trends, um, that sort of thing. Going to fashion shows. It was wow, well, so glamorous. <laughs> Um, a few years ago, read an article that Vogue magazine wrote up on you and your conversion and your relationship with Sneert with modesty yeah. and, and modest wear. Tell, tell mm -hmm. us how, how they decided to write an article about so you. So I ended up writing the article and it was something that came about because basically how I dress. So as the, um, as the process of conversion went on, I started to change how I dressed. I was always the girl in the office with the shirt and the you know, skinny jeans and the ballet pumps and that was kind of my office uniform and then slowly as things changed and my ideas changed um, my appreciation of sneers changed I um, started to wear my midi skirts and my blouses and um, my editor she emailed me one day and I'll never forget it and she said you know I've noticed that you've changed the way you dress in the office I know about your process she was always very interested in it um, she said, would you write about it for the magazine? And it's something that Im my immediate reaction was like, oh, I don't know. Because it really is, you kind of open your heart to it and it's such a personal process. But then at the same time, I just thought, actually, it'd be the most wonderful thing to write about because when you're going through it, you kind of don't have the opportunity to take a step back and, and kind of reflect on what you've done and what you've been through. Um, and so it just gave me the opportunity to do that, which was amazing. So actually it was quite cathartic writing about it because it really allowed me to put into concise words how I felt about the process, not just inwardly but outwardly and how I, because you know how you dress is how people in the world perceive you, um, whether we like it or not. So it, it was very much um, being able to introspectively look at the process I've been through but also um, externally you know, how I've changed and how that's affected my, my life and my world and my job. Yeah and I think that's that's one of the things that I love about it is that every morning you're making a choice and you're actively deciding today I'm gonna, this is how I'm going to dress and I think that's one of the things that I love about Judaism is that there's little things that you do every day that assert your faith yes. um, and I, I, that resonates with me actually because I like, I like doing those little, little things every day whether it's what you eat or what you wear, yes. um, that's the, you know, the quite special things about Judaism. And do you feel that, um, I know that part of the process is that you learn with a tutor, mm -hmm. but at some point you have to move in with a Jewish family. Yeah. Um, I know that because a few converts have moved into my house, yeah. and I always feel a little bit sorry for them, <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, welcome to the madness, yeah. you know, between Shabbos and Yontif, and, yeah. you know, Jewish schooling, and the, lot, and the many, many kids. So what was that experience like? So, I was kind of petrified, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, I think the, the thought of living with a family that's not your own 
is somewhat terrifying. Especially um, at what age were you when you I was in? 29. Wow. Um, so and I, you know, I was living with my girlfriend in central London. Um, we living the life. Living the, living the life. I was with my best friend and I, you know, I used to joke even moving back home with my family. Um, <laughs> I would have not been excited about the process, but I, you know, I moved in with the most unbelievable family. And to be honest, that was my favorite part of the whole process because as you know, Judaism, you can you, le you learn it, and that's obviously essential, but you live the life, you don't just read it and learn yeah. about it, and to, to, live, um, to live an observant lifestyle was something that was quite daunting at the beginning, but then I was living with the most unbelievable family, they just showed me all the beauty of it, and that kind of just took everything to the next level, and it really confirmed to me that I was doing the right thing, and that was something that it was always meant to be. And now that you've finished the process, mm -hmm. are there, is there any advice for women watching who are going through the process? Mm -hmm. Is there any like pearls of wisdom? Is there anything that you would want to say to them? Um, I think, I mean, it sounds really cheesy, but I think just follow your heart. And I think if you're, if you're in it for the right reasons and you're doing it for the right reasons, it's going to be the most rewarding thing that you could ever imagine. So how would you describe being a Jewish woman? What does that, what does that mean to you if somebody says that you're a Jewish woman? What does that mean? Um, to me, it means empowerment. It means strength. It means, it means femininity, because I think that's another thing about Sneas is this idea of modesty, is that you have to dress frumpy and you, you, you can't be yourself. Or look. But for me, when I was learning, one of my tutors said the, something that just like the penny dropped and it was such a clear moment. And she said, to look attractive but not attracting. Um, so it's that strength and femininity without shouting about it. It's like that innate yes. knowledge of, uh, you know, I'm, I am a strong, happy, healthy woman. And that, that comes from Judaism for me. Um, so being the mother of a household and looking after a household and raising your children, but actually in Judaism it just flips it on its head and it's something to be um, revered and savoured and I think that's something that I really will channel through meeting all the Jewish women in my life. I'll definitely bring that into my home and please God we have a big family, that's something that I want to instill in my children. Wow, so when you were growing up and you were in other people's Jewish homes you saw that the Jewish mother was put on a pedestal. Yeah, totally. Seen as like by the husband, by the kids, you know, it's something that Every single family, without fail, in my experience, that's that's the family dynamic, and I love that. I think it's amazing. And the ideas are beautiful and very special, but when you live it, you, you like all the small things that you do daily to say, mm. I'm part of this, and I'm, yeah. I, I want this in my life, yeah. and this is meaningful on so many levels. Yeah. I think that that ends up you end up living a very high, very high existence, yeah. a very special totally. existence. Yeah, no, absolutely yes. agree. Thank Aww. you for having Thank me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yay.